Yovalim Jubilees 29. And it came to pass when Rachel had borne Yosef that Levan went to shear his sheep, for they were distant from him a three days journey. And Yaakov saw that Levan was going to shear his sheep, and Yaakov called Leah and Rachel and spoke kindly unto them that they should come with him to the land of Canaan. For he told them how he had seen everything in a dream, even all that he had spoken unto him, that he should return to his, his father's house. And they said, To every place whither you go, we will go with you. And Yaakov blessed the Elohim of Yitzhak, his father, and the Elohim of Avraham, his father's father, and he arose and mounted his women and his children and took all his possessions and crossed the river and came to the land of Gilad. And Yaakov hid his intention from Laban and told him not. And in the seventh year of the fourth week, Yaakov turned his face toward Gilad in the first month, on the twenty-first thereof. And Laban pursued after him and overtook Yaakov in the mountain of Gilad in the third month on the thirteenth thereof. And Yahuwah did not suffer him to injure Yaakov, for he appeared to him in a dream by night. And Laban spoke to Yaakov. And on the fifteenth of those days, Yaakov made a feast for Laban and for all who came with him. And Yaakov swore to Laban that day, and Levan also to Yaakov, that neither should cross the mountain of Gilad to the other with evil purpose. And he made there a heap for a witness, wherefore the name of that place is called the heap of witness after this heap. But before they used to call on the land of Gilad, the land of the Rephaim, for it was the land of the Rephaim, and the Rephaim were born there. Rephaim, whose height was ten, nine, eight, down to seven cubits. And their habitation from the land of the children of Ammon to Mount Kerman, and the seats of their kingdom were Kiriataim and Ashtaroth and Adrii and Misur, and Beon. And Yahuwah destroyed them because of the evil of their deeds, for they were very malignant, and the Amorim dwelt in their stead, wicked and sinful. And there is no people today which has wrought to the full all their sins, and they have no longer length of life on the earth. And Yaakov sent away Lavan. And he departed into Aram Naharim, the land of the east. And Yaakov returned to the land of Gilad. And he passed over the Yabak in the ninth month, on the eleventh thereof. And on that day Esau, his brother, came to him, and he was reconciled to him, and departed from him unto the land of Seir. But Yaakov dwelt in tents. And in the fifth year of the fifth week, in this jubilee, he crossed the Yardin and dwelt beyond the Yardin. And he pastured his sheep from the sea of the heap unto Bayat Sha'an and unto Dotan and unto the forest of Ma'ali, Akrabim. And he sent to his father Yitshak of all his substance clothing and food and meat and drink and milk and butter and cheese and some dates of the valley. And to his mother Rivka also four times a year, between the times of the months, between plow plowing and reaping and between autumn and the rain season and between winter and spring, to the tower of Avraham. For Yitzhak had returned from the well of the oath and gone up to the tower of his father Avraham, and he dwelt there apart from his son Esau. For in the days when Yaakov went to Aram Naharaim, 
Esau took to himself a woman, Makalat, the daughter of Yishmael. And he gathered together all the flocks of his father and his women and went up and dwelt on Mount Seir and left Yitzhak his father at the well of the oath alone. And Yitzhak went up from the well of the oath and dwelt in the tower of Avram his father on the mountains of Kevran. And thither Yaakov sent all that he did send to his father and his mother from time to time all they needed. And they blessed Yaakov with all their heart and with all their soul.